Well, because... at least in Japan, yeah. you are right. Yeah, yeah the Kobe earthquake changed yeah. our the direction very much. So the, that was a real big moment yeah. for, for the Japanese uh, way. Okay, and then uh, next question from Kato. Uh, we know that there are two types of mm. earthquake, right? Tectonic and volcanic. And then yes. we're talking about GPS also. Mm. And then how do GPS data able to distinguish those uh, type of earthquake? Yes. Uh, as you said, the, there are two types of earthquakes. Yeah. One is a tectonic earthquake and the other one is volcanic earthquake. Wait a minute, what is tectonic, what is volcanic? <laughs> ah, okay, uh, the uh, tectonic earthquake mm -hmm. is, uh, as I said, the, the, uh, the re occurs result, uh, as a result of the uh, accumulation of cluster strain. Mm -hmm. This is mostly uh, due to the plate motion, mm -hmm. as you may uh, already introduced. Mm -hmm. The, the, the Earth's surface is covered by the uh, tectonic plates mm -hmm. and that moves each other and that gives uh, the, the local strain like in Indonesia or in Japan mm -hmm. and that creates earthquake. Uh, this is called tectonic earthquake. Mm -hmm. But volcanic uh, earthquake is somewhat different. Mm -hmm. In the volcano, under the volcano, mm -hmm. the magma is coming up mm -hmm. and that creates earthquake and they, after uh, a while, the volcano erupts, and that creates a bigger the crustal deformation. So those mechanisms are totally different. And the, because of that, the crustal deformation the, uh, resulted from those two events are very different. In the case of volcanic uh, uh, eruption, the crustal deformation is something like expanding or shrinking type of crustal deformation. But the tectonic uh, earthquake is mostly a kind of shearing motion. The, the crust will displace like this. Mm -hmm. That is tectonic earthquake. So the, the, if you look at the G GPS data, you can clearly distinguish between this is uh, the tectonic earthquake and this is volcanic uh, the earthquake. So they are, it's That's not... The the, yeah, okay. yes. And then to the question that yes. how do the... Um, uh, GPS data able to distinguish those two earthquakes? <laughs> yeah, because of those difference of uh, mechanism, yeah. the, the way that the crust deforms mm -hmm. is very different. So if you put the many GPS sites nearby the earthquake fault okay. or volcanoes, mm -hmm. then you will see that the, uh, how does the, the uh, point move this way or that way. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the case of uh, the tectonic earthquake, the uh, ground moves something like this. Okay, yeah. But in the case of volcano, okay. mm -hmm. then the crust moves like this oh, or shrinking. shrinking. Oh, yeah, okay. so okay. The, based on those uh, difference yeah, of okay. the uh, pattern of crust okay. deformation, you can distinguish, distinguish okay. these okay. two. Baik, mungkin saya harus ke Prof untuk sedikit menjelaskan dalam bahasa Indonesia, Prof. Karena mungkin ada di antara semua people yang uh, kurang memahami begitu apa yang dijelaskan tadi uh, oleh Prof hmm. uh, Kato mengenai yes. uh, tadi gempa tektonik dan juga vulkanik itu dan bagaimana caranya GPS ini untuk bisa membedakan. Ini seperti hmm. dikatakan uh, Profesor Kato hmm. tadi. Jadi kalau jadi GPS ini sebenarnya dia kita menggunakannya untuk melihat pergerakan, vektor hmm. displacement-nya ya, ke arah mana bergerak titik-titik GPS-nya. Hmm. Nah, kalau gunung api, kalau misalnya ada gunung api, kita pasang jadi titik GPS. Hmm. Kalau dia vektor pergeserannya begitu kita gambarkan hmm. panah-panahnya bisa keluar semua, hmm. oh berarti dia membengkak kanu. Atau kalau ke dalam semua hmm. juga vulkano okay, okay. ini. Okay. Tapi kalau misalnya gerakan misalnya sesar hmm. gitu ya. Hmm. Yang satu sebelah sini mungkin ke arah sana, hmm. yang ini ke arah sini. <laughs> itu berarti itu berarti tektonik. Uh, gitu ya? ya. oh, Oke, okay. jadi fungsi si GPS itu untuk kita melihat arah. pertama arah dan besarnya. Besar. Oh. Nah, dengan GPS kita bisa tahu, oh ini titik hmm. ini setahunnya bergerak, misalnya 5 cm ke hmm. arah utara, hmm. Hmm. Oh, yang sebelah sana ke arah selatan. Hmm. Oh, berarti ini ada sesar mungkin hmm. di sini. Hmm. Jangan kemana-mana Smart People, It Tech Talk akan kembali lagi selain satu. Kita lanjutkan lagi obrolan kali ini, jadi Anda masih menyaksikan It Tech Talk. So currently, which areas are selected as a location for uh, to install this GPS? 
uh, I have to mention before that the, the organization that is responsible for GPS uh, in Indonesia is we call it Baku Surtana, Badan Koordinasi Survei dan Pemetaan Nasional okay. di uh, Cibinong. Mm -hmm. And I think they have established uh, up to now mm -hmm. about 80, yeah? okay. 80 continuous GPS from Aceh. I think up to now Nusa Tenggara Timur they have, but they have also in India, in Papua. Okay. So Bako Surtana has uh, many, also LIPI. LIPI has uh, what we call sugar network mm -hmm. in the west coast uh, Sumatra, mm -hmm. and also ITB in cooperation with uh, Professor Kato and GSI from mm -hmm. Japan uh, start to put uh, now we have four mm -hmm. uh, continuous uh, station in West Java. Mm -hmm. Why we put in West Java? Because we are concerned about uh, the fault. There are three fault runnings from uh, Sukabumi, yeah, Pelabuhan Ratu, there is Cimandiri Fault up to Padalarang, and then there is Lembang Fault, mm -hmm. and then there is Baribis Fault from Subang goes to Majalengka, Kuningan, to Kroya, mm -hmm. to Cilacap. Okay. That's the reason we concentrate on that one. So our JICA project the GST with LIPI is uh, in that area at the moment. Nah itu juga apakah menjawab pertanyaan uh, smart people atau masyarakat semua yang berkata bahwa di area Jawa dan juga Sumatera terutama Sumatera Barat itu memang rawan sekali gempa begitu ya? Okay. I think uh, all the Indonesian region is uh, prone to earthquake except uh, maybe oh. we can say Borneo, ya, okay. Kalimantan. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> West Coast, Sumatera, and then Java, Sulawesi, Nusa Tenggara, uh, Maluku, even Irian is prone to earthquake. We have just, I think a few days ago, yeah, in Papua, yeah. Maybe only Borneo that is stable, yeah. Okay. So we should move there, move up there. We should move the Borneo. <laughs> okay. Jadi memang. Um, karena, karena mungkin secara demo uh, apa namanya secara geografis begitu Indonesia memang terletak ya itu tadi karena di antara tiga lembaga besar itu. Ya, yeah, as mentioned, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. we are in the colliding area yeah. of the Australian plate, Eurasian plate, yeah. and Pacific plate, and so, then so we have a lot of active faults. But I think the 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 subduction zone and everything mm -hmm. is we we understood more already. But the main problem in Indonesia is, mm. I think, active fault mapping. In like in Sumatra, we know there is a big uh, Semangko, a great Sumatra fault. But in Java, yeah, we have Cimandiri, Baribis, mm -hmm. uh, Lembang, Baribis, Opa. Mm -hmm. uh, we have many small, small mm. fault. I think that uh, should be the priority, you know, to 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 study, to map. As Professor Kato mentioned, also to have a probabilistic map related to all this uh, fault. Java has, I think, 100, how many? 114 million people. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very dangerous. I think okay. maybe Professor Kato can also explain how they map the active fault yeah. in Japan. Yeah. yeah. It's made me panic already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> can you explain about that, Prof Kato? Uh, how do you mapping? Well, yeah, uh, of course, the, uh, in Japan, the, it's similar to the Indonesia, and yeah. we have many, many active forts. And uh, many geologists, however, uh, studied thoroughly mm -hmm. for, for the whole Japanese islands, mm -hmm. where are those active forts are located. Mm -hmm. And of course, some of them already created mm -hmm. the big earthquakes. So we have, um, I think in Japan, more than 1,500 active forts. However, many of those are very minor things. So for, first, what we did is to choose the important active forts, mm -hmm. which counts about 100. Okay. And we surveyed those 100 active forts, mm -hmm. and digging the uh, active forts and finding out the layers, mm -hmm. and uh, they find out uh, the old earthquakes. And uh, they dated the, those earthquakes, when did the last earthquake occur. Mm -hmm. And if possible, they uh, also found the uh, second or third earthquakes in those layers, mm -hmm. so that you can find that a repeat interval of mm -hmm. those earthquakes. But that can provide us some estimate of mm -hmm. when will the next earthquake is for that active force. So you can summarize all of those results. Mm -hmm. Then 
you estimate from those uh, surveys, mm -hmm. you estimate how large the intensity would be at any time, uh, at the time of earthquake, due to the earthquake of that, and you average the results of all of those mm. surveys. Then you can find out the, what is the seismic risk, and you can uh, extend that for the whole islands. So that uh, you can do, do that in Indonesia, that you first survey active fault, and also estimate ground motion due to if the earthquake occurred. Then you can make a hazard map, or a seismic risk map. Okay. Yeah, that's the way you do. Okay, yeah. so uh, when we get the uh, data, mm -hmm. and then uh, when if uh, there's a, pre, a prediction mm -hmm. about the earthquake, then how we can distribute the information to the um, local area or the uh, people in the area? Okay, that's a very, very important question. Yeah. The, first of all, uh, just if we give them the, the, those kind of information, that could create just a panic to the people. So before that kind of information, the, we should educate all of people what the earthquake is and what happens when the earthquake occurs and what the precursor is. We should educate the basic feature of the what earthquake is and maybe or, or also for volcano it's similar. But anyway, the, what is most important is to educate the people of those basic knowledge. I think that's very important. Basic knowledge. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Prof. Hasanuddin, what basic knowledge um, Indonesian government has dis distributed the, uh, to the um, people about the earthquake or the condition of earthquake so far? So far? <laughs> well, actually, uh, as uh, Professor Kato mentioned, I think the, the main task now for the government is to educate the people. Yeah. I think it's better if this uh, information about uh, not just earthquake, but because Indonesia is also prone toward the uh, uh, volcano flooding, landslide. Mm. So the curriculum on the natural hazard uh, should be uh, entered to the, I think, elementary school. Since elementary school, I think should be, our people should be educated, yeah? So then they get aware, and then how to prevent, if possible, uh, how to uh, adapt with uh, this natural hazard. In relation with the earthquake, I think I have to mention that earthquake do not kill the people. Yeah. Oh. Usually, yeah, the earthquake just sh uh, okay. shake the ground, yeah. I mean, yeah. but people got killed. <laughs> people got killed because, because of, of the building oh, and yeah. all these things. I yeah. think this is very important. I mean, prediction mm. of earthquake is, mm. is important. Mm. We have to still to study mm. and monitor. Mm. But at the same time, we have to educate people. And also government, I think, should also improve the building code. Mm. Mm. I mean, in the area where we know we, from probabilistic approach mm. uh, mm. that uh, there's possibility of mm. earthquake in the future, then the building should be earthquake uh, proof, and I think okay. that's more important, man. Eh? Okay, so that's that's <laughs> what Japan do, yeah, yeah. with the um, art, uh, yes. building and everything. Yeah, yeah, we have a very strong, uh, very good uh, building code, I yeah. think. Yeah. But uh, I'm not very sure about uh, in Indonesia what's mm -hmm. going on. So in, anyway, I think the building code is very important. But the more important is that just not to make a building code, but it should be implemented. Yes. It should be they applied to any of uh, those houses. So, and, yeah, and uh, sometimes those building, if the building code is very strict, the construction became more expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit difficult uh, yeah. Yeah, thing to do. Okay. Yeah. Jadi uh, smart people. Jadi bukan hanya sekedar saja kita membicarakan bahwa kita harus membangun bangunan-bangunan yang uh, tahan gempa begitu ya, Prof. Mm -hmm. ya, tapi Ini harus diedukasi dari sedini mungkin, jadi mungkin dari sekolah-sekolah dasar sudah mulai diperkenalkan bahwa memang kebetulan mau tidak mau kita harus menerima bahwa kita tinggal di negara yang memang rawan akan segala bencana alam. Begitu ya Prof ya? Oke, okay, thank you so much for our discussion. It's very important. Oke, okay, it's good to know you Prof. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Juga untuk Prof. Salam untuk teman-teman di ITB ya. Oh, yeah. Baik, kalau begitu smart people kita ketemu lagi dalam Effect Talk untuk episode berikutnya.